Hello, this is Tyler, and I'm reviewing episode 2 of the 2019 Dodo. Alright, as soon as we get into it, we get badass old guy with the fucking sword loot. Yeah! So, the badass sword loot carrying old dude is approached by a monster asking if he wants, I don't know what, possibly the bell he is carrying, but we don't know. Um, it is stated earlier that it is very difficult to travel within these times, um, and that one usually risks their life by doing so. However, considering what we've seen of the last episode, I think old loot dude is going to be very fine. Because, you know, because the loot has a fucking sword. Okay, so after our epic opening, we of course get our title card. This time it's the story of Bandai. Wait, as in Bandai Nemico? So are we going to be learning about the, uh, what was it? They did video games and I think they did toys currently. So, okay, I guess this is turning to a learning show. Whatever, I'm down. Let's do it. Okay, no, but seriously, I'm going to guess that Bandai is probably our badass loot sword wielder. Just just my guess here. I hope it doesn't go the way of the story of Daigo, where he appears at the beginning, then at the very end, and that we actually do get to see more of this guy, because, you know, he's pretty fucking awesome. But we'll see. Okay, so now we are back with our protagonist, Dododo, and the prosthetic samurai. This scene is basically a recap of the last episode, just what happened, well, at least what happened um, with the muck monster, um, Denki, I believe I said his name was, Deki, whatever his name was. Um, and it's basically just reestablishing that he has prosthetic limbs and... Uh, um, Dodo is trying to figure out how he can apparently see despite having prosthetic eyes. We know, we, the viewers know he ha can see like aura, kind of like the blind man, the badass blind dude. And it appears that the samurai also can't hear that or he can hear in a sense and he's just ignoring Dodo. Though it kind of makes sense if he can't since his ears are also prosthetic, but... We don't know how that works yet, so that's where we are. Okay, so we get confirmation that our prosthetic samurai is in fact Hayaki Maru, and we also get confirmation that he in fact cannot see or hear or anything like that, which, as I said, makes sense since, you know, his eyes and ears are prosthetic. Um, he can, however, see auras of people's souls, which we also kind of already figured. But we get confirmation that is, in fact, what's going on. So, there you go. It is stated that um, Dodoro is the second person in Hayaki Maru's life to not really just walk past him and to kind of stay with him. And immediately after that, we see Jukai, which is most likely going to lead up to us learning that Jukai was, in fact, the one to give Hayaki Maru his prosthetics. And probably raised him as well, I imagine. Since, you know, he would have had to find him as a baby. Unless if he just somehow survived that whole time as a baby with no arms, legs, skin, or anything. Which, you know, suspense of disbelief definitely needs to be used for this. But I think that's going a little too far. It's my opinion. So, yeah. Um, we see Junkai um, doing basically what he was doing last episode. Giving prosthetics to the dead. So, we might learn more about um, Hayaki Maru's backstory in this episode. Maybe. Let's find out. Okay, so Dodoro wants to make money by helping a village with a demon problem. And we see our bow demon again. Most likely the demon problem. Um, Hayaki Maru seems to have noticed him. However, he just passes him up. So, whether if he did notice him and there wasn't really any sort of strong aura that make him attack or if he didn't or if he just doesn't attack all demons or negative auras he sees I don't know but he did pass him up in this instance he might not have noticed him it does seem like he did though so we arrive at the village and Dodoro basically starts I guess the only way to explain it is he starts selling off um 
Hayek might have service, you know, his skills and whatnot with the demons. Um, and they meet a man, Denkichi, who is filling in for the chief named Bandai. Now, is our badass loot sword guy, Bandai, and the chief of this village? I don't know, but he's awesome, and I wouldn't be surprised if he was the chief of a village, because, you know, he has a fucking loot sword that should automatically give you rights to be a chief of whatever fucking village you want. Heck, just throw Daigo out of the fucking country and just make awesome badass loot sword guy the new ruler. I mean, I'd go for it. Damn it. So, I guess Bandai is a woman, so it can't be her badass loot sword guy. So, I guess we're probably not going to find out more about him. Then again, going off of the episode of Daigo, it's probably going to be a thing where the character in the title probably doesn't appear a lot in the episode anyways, considering the fact that we are how far through this thing, like about 10 minutes, and we still haven't seen this Bandai. Um, she's probably going to appear, like, I don't know, maybe once throughout the whole thing. Um, we have not seen, um, the loot guy for a while now. I mean, actually, we've only seen him in the very beginning with the bell demon, but we have seen the bell demon again, but he was nowhere to be seen. I doubt he was killed because, you know, he has a fucking loot and you can't be killed with a sword loot, it's impossible, obviously. So, sadly, we might not find out more about our loot, dude. Okay, so our bone monster appears again, and Hayoki Maru doesn't even appear to acknowledge it. Dododo is, like, freaking out, trying to get him to fight and everything, and Hayoki Maru just kind of sits there. Now, we've seen with the um, old guy that he does have an aura, um... So, I'm guessing Hayaki Maru does, in fact, see this aura, but maybe he does not have an evil aura. Like, maybe it's not of ill intention. I believe the aura that we saw when the old guy saw him was yellow, and usually the auras that we see when it's, like, someone evil, it's usually red. So, whoever this bell monster is, or whatever it is, might not actually be, um, an evil being. So... We're going to hopefully figure out what's going on with that. This could be like, um, maybe a flip-flop type situation. Maybe the bell monster is actually the good guy in this scenario. And the village people are actually the bad guys. Maybe not intentionally, but maybe they're doing something negative to get all the wealth that they're getting. Because it is noted that they don't seem to have much to be bringing in money yet they have a lot of money um so maybe they're doing something bad that is affecting this bell guy and he's actually the innocent one in all of this and maybe hey yakimaru knows that that's just my guess let's continue watching and find out so we finally meet that bandai the chief of the village and yeah she's She's just a woman. She has these weird dot things on her forehead. Um, well, I guess they're not really weird, but they're they're there. She looks evil. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how else to describe her really. She she's pretty, I guess. She looks older. She has like an she has a more defined face, I guess is the best way to um describe her here um of course i'm gonna have a picture up so you can look at it yourself um but yeah she looks like what you would she looks evil i mean she kind of reminds me of orochimaru from uh naruto uh well not like orochimaru himself but more like the when we first see orochimaru and he's like in that disguise form that's kind of like who she reminds me of um now dodo thinks he is very beautiful however Hayaki Maru must think that she is rather ugly on the inside, at least, because he tries to cut her, pulls his arm sword out and everything. Um, he is stopped and everything, however, this probably is getting at least closer to confirming, um, my suspicions from earlier, 
that's actually the people of the town that are evil and not that bell monster thing. So, we still don't know what they're doing. Like, what they're doing to get all that money um, or what they did or did not do to this bell monster. Like, maybe it was just some random... Like, maybe demons and stuff are just common in this world. Like, uh, outside of the... Um, what was it? 16 demons, I think. Um, and it's just kind of a normal occurrence for them to just roam the world. And some are good, some aren't. And maybe this is just some random monster that they just kind of picked up to kind of play the this role. Or maybe he's just kind of randomly there. Um... We don't know, but it does appear that the village is the evil one and not this bell monster. And the bell monster was kind of a sh very short-lived red herring. All right, badass loot dude is back. Um, he it reveals that he was also thrown in the same storeroom and that he was like kind of taken in his sleep. Um, and he explains to Dororo how he and Hayaki Maru sees, like how they can see people's souls. But I am so glad he's back. I was thinking he was just going to appear in the beginning of the episode and we wouldn't see him again. But yeah. Badass sword, dude. Badass sword, loot, dude. Loot sword. Loot sword. I want a loot sword. Okay, so our beautiful woman, um, I am doing the quotations if you cannot hear it in my voice, turns out to be a lizard bitch. Yep, yeah, that's right. Um, the, uh, human body was like kind of like what angler fishes do they use that light on their head to attract prey or whatever or whatever it is that they do you know what an angler fish does <laughs> maybe anyways um yeah she it's kind of like that the tail is supposed to look human and i guess it's supposed to lure people into a false sense of security and then the actual body, which is like the lower half of her, or I guess upper half of her, since the the um, human body is basically like the tail. So I guess the human body would be the lower half, and the lizard bitch body would be the upper half. Um, that part will jump out and then eat um, the prey that she lures in. Okay, so epic fight is epic. It doesn't get finished because the guy from earlier... What, what, was it? what did I say his name was? Denkichi? Was it Denkichi? And, anyways, he shows up and he, like, helps the lizard bitch escape. But the fight but, but the fight that we got was fucking awesome. Hayaki Maru got impaled. He doesn't... It doesn't really seem to affect him that much, but maybe it did. I mean, like, after he she impaled him, the um hair arm thing or whatever the fuck is like stuck in his chest like the whole entire time or like on his side um but he gets a hit on her too by slicing her eyes so yes he's probably fucking blind now <laughs> i guess they're leveled playing field i mean then again hayaki maru can see uh or so maybe not maybe he'll have an advantage we'll find out in round two hayaki maru gives chase after the lizard bits um, another fight happens. It is, of course, also epic. He appears to have got um, impaled again, this time by bamboo. However, before the Elizabeth is about to attack him, she gets distracted by the bell demon that appears again. And it and in reality, Hayaki Madu did not get impaled. And he got above her and then impaled her in the fucking face. Oh, God. He just slices her face in half, and all the blood just oozes out of her fucking eyes and nose and all that shit. Fucking awesome. So, the lizard bitch is dead. However, the tail part of the lizard's body, the human part, is still alive. So, maybe the human part is the actual body and the lizard part isn't. Maybe it's two different bodies. I don't know how this relationship works. But no, the tail part of the body or the human part of the body is still alive. And she starts um, deforming from a beautiful woman into like an oni. And she's talking like um, like she knows Hay Hayaki Mother, like she's seen him before. And that she's like, I wonder if you can get it all back and stuff like that. Probably talking about his uh, body parts. 
and then he just impaled her in the fucking face. I'm laughing. I'm sorry. I watched this scene already probably about five times, like, just kind of repeated it, because it's just funny. She's, like, talking all serious and badass and everything, and then he just impales her in the fucking face. So we see a bum monster again, and he turns into money. Um, it seems like, um, the way that they're explaining it, he is, like, a spirit that was created from the souls of, um, the travelers that were killed by the lizard bitch, um, and that the him turning into money is, like, the money that they had, or, like, kind, and, and that's how, um, the village got all their wealth. After the lizard bitch ate the traveler, they took the money. And the spirit is kind of like a collection of all their, um, of all that. I, 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 that's what I'm getting out of this explanation anyways. The bell signifies the first traveler that was eaten, by the way. And it was the sound of the bell that, um, Denkichi, um, wanted to be destroyed. Okay, so our trio, yes, Badass blind guy included. All right, main cast. Probably not. He's probably going to leave. But they leave the village, and we learn that Dodo's mother had passed away. The reason why he brings it up is because he states that the um, human version of the lizard bitch kind of reminded him of his own mother in appearance, I'm guessing. Hayaki Maru also finally introduces himself to Dororo. It also appears that Dororo cannot read as he asked um, the old guy who is blind, just as a reminder, to read it for him. Um, he is able to do so by feeling the words since he wrote his name in the sand. Um, so Dororo now knows that the samurai's name is Hayaki Maru. We see Daigo again and apparently there's some sort of problems going on at the borders. They're neighboring um allies the the sakai clan um appears to be more on guard um and it is stating that they appear to be getting ready for a war um daigo does not however think this is possible since they are allies but sends the messenger to investigate um or soldier or whoever it is to investigate anyways and that's really all we really see of daigo we now return to the Hall of Hell, where another demonic statue has split into two. So we know what that means. Since Hayaki Maru defeated one of the demons, he gets something back. Um, however, I cannot, I'm not entirely sure what he got back here. We see the scene where we see like an um, uh, x-ray kind of view of his body. And we see like a skeletal structure, I think. Or maybe those are veins. Because he has a skeleton. Like, he has, like, you know, he has a skull and bones, like, in his body and stuff. I mean, he would have to. I mean, then again, he apparently doesn't have organs, so maybe he doesn't have bones. But I don't think it's ever stated he doesn't. So I'm assuming he does. But maybe those are, like, his, uh, veins. Like, um, or maybe pain sensors. He does look like he's in pain here. So... Um, like nerves, that's, that's what I'm thinking of. So maybe it could be his like nerves, his nervous system. Um, yeah, I'm not entirely sure why he gained back. Doesn't really, um, right after this is the ending. It's the, um, ending theme. So yeah, I'm not entirely sure what he got back. It seems to either be like veins or maybe a nervous system, something along those lines. Um, maybe a skeletal structure, but, like I said, I'm pretty sure he does have his bones. Other than in the areas where he just doesn't have the limbs for the bones to go to. Like his arms and legs. Um, we'll probably find out in the next episode, I imagine. But, yeah, right now I have no idea what he actually got back. And, on, a, on another note, the old dude is still there. Like our old badass um, loot-wielding sword dude. Sword loot-wielding... I am all mucked up. Anyways, he is still there, so we might, he might still be traveling with the group in the next episode. Maybe he is a protagonist now, which would be fucking awesome. 
Of course, we didn't get to see his uh, loot sword at all in this episode, which sucks, but he's still a badass, so that's cool. So we see the ending card, which, ha which features the lizard bitch and her name, which actually is Bondi, the name that she was given throughout the episode, which makes sense. So that is the end of this review. I hope you liked it. Um, and I'm going to start saying the whole uh, uh, like, share, subscribe thing. And I guess that was just me saying it right there. Hopefully in future videos I'll just say it. I'm not used to saying that since I've never said it before. But yeah. So yeah, you can do all that if you like. I will not complain. Um, so yeah, that'll be it. I'll see you when I see you. Bye.